no need to know that the ferry will be your new home. And now for the adventures of Lightning Jim. In the camp of Chief Big Eagle, deep in uncharted Indian territory, two crafty-faced white men are discussing with the chief a message they have brought. Chief Big Eagle is talking. Yeah. Chief Big Eagle, not one or more. No. Chief Big Eagle's children, much happy, good hunting, good crop. Chief Big Eagle, not one or more. No. But Chief Big Eagle, Brandon and me just came from Chief Red Fox's camp. He's fixing to go on the warpath again. That's right, Chief Big Eagle. We're your friends. That's why we're warning you. Yeah. Two moons past, Chief Big Eagle smoke them big peace pipe with Chief Red Fox. Sure. He wants to surprise you. Yeah. Make you think he's your friend, and then ride down on you and cut your brace to pieces. Why, we heard him say that he liked your land better. He was going to kill you and all your braves and take your squaws. Yeah, he's the eagle, one of them No one fight. But if Chief Red Fox want him fight, me kill him. That's the ticket. you got to protect yourself and your squaws. That's why we're going to sell your guns and ammunition. Because we like you and we want to see you beat Chief Red Fox. Chief Red Fox have run to... No, don't you see? That's where you can get him easy. His braves are only going to have bows and arrows, but yours will have guns. You no sell them guns to Chief Red Fox? Oh, no, he just sell guns to you. We're your friends, Chief Big Eagle, see? We're your friends. <laughs> A few hours later, Kraft and Branton are in the camp of Chief Red Fox. He just come from Chief Big Eagle's camp, Chief Red Fox. We heard him making call out to send a war party here. Chief Big Eagle, my friend, we smoke peace pipe. He lied here. We heard him say that his hunting's no good. He wants your land and your squaws. Chief Big Eagle lied to Chief Red Fox. Chief Big Eagle died. Where was you, Chief? We don't like Big Eagle neither. Mm, that's why we dashed over here. Yes. So we can sell you guns and ammunition. You no sell Chief Big Eagle guns? No, we wouldn't sell him no guns. We're your friends, Chief Red Fox. We're your friends. Early in the days of empire building, the United States government, recognizing the dangers involved to the Indians themselves as well as to the pioneers, forbade the sale of either whiskey or rifles to the Indians. It was thus that the United States Marshals, those men who practically single-handed worked unceasingly to keep law and order between the hot-tempered savages, did much of the good work which saw its reward in better relations between the white and red men. Lightning Jim Whipple, whose very name brought a sense of security to the settlers, and steer into the heart of the law-breaking traders was one of these marshals. Word of the treachery of Kraft and Branton reached Lightning, and soon, astride his powerful black horse thunder, the famous marshal with his deputy, Whitey Larson, was on the trail of the traders. A trail which would end only when the lawbreakers would be brought to justice. And now we find Kraft and Branton hurrying back to Kelseyville for the guns and ammunition which they hoped to sell the Indians in the war they themselves had started. 
Everything's working out just like we planned, Brandon. <laughs> yeah, Crash. All we gotta do now is deliver the guns and ammunition and get paid. Yeah. And then light out the state or the marshals get after us. Yeah, we can't light out any too soon to suit me. This is lightning Jim's territory. I don't want that hombre on my trail. Not for all the gold them Indians got. Don't worry, we got plenty of time. Crash! Look! Look down there. You mean them two horsemen way down there on the trail? Yeah. That one on the big black horse. That's like on Jim. Yeah. The marshals must have followed us in Chief Big Eagle camp. We gotta get out of here, puzzle. Let's cross the river here and then ride back to the way. Wait, just a minute. No sense in just running. Sooner or later, the marshals will catch up with us. Well, we can't just stand here and get caught. We'll walk our horses in the stream away. Good idea. That'll give them a slip. Which way are we going, upstream or down? Oh, down. There's an army post upstream. My Come on, let's go. I'd like to see that confound lightning Jim follow our tail now. Wolf and this wool boy. Oh, 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 boy. Yes. See, look, Lightning. See, see, the trail of them traders is right into the river. We must be crossed there. Let's go cross, Lightning. Come on, Thunder. Come on, boy. Yes, Janice, yeah, low hair. Take it, boy. Take it. 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 Take I'll ride downstream on the other side, and you ride down on this side. We've got to get out of this river sooner or later. When they do, they'll leave a trail. And we'll be right down there. Let's go, Thunder. Stopping for lightning. Uh, there's just a trail leading there, plain as day. Yeah, but there's something happened right over here. Those prints is all jumbled up. Wait. I'm going to take a close look. All right. We got off the horses here. Well, we wish I had we'll see what the first step makes say, as long as they kept on going. Yeah, but they didn't keep going again. Yeah, but there's the hoof prints. Yeah, the horses kept going, but they didn't. Tried to cover the trail, but they left one boot print here. Yeah. Hey, you think that them Jaspers left the horses? Well, let's soon we'll find out. You'll bet you they did. Yeah, the weed with the stalk freshly broken. And here, yeah, a couple of feet further, is a stone out of place. You can see with the fresh dirt underneath. You see, that means they're headed for them rocks up there. Right. I have your horse, buddy. Where, where, where are we going? We're going up into them rocks. On foot. Um, We can take it easy now. Yeah. Now all we got to do is cut across to Kelseyville and hop the train there for Arizona. Yeah, here's two guys that Lightning Jim never caught up with. Yeah. Wait. Don't go that way. Why not? It's the shortest way. Yes. But that's the Indian chief burial ground there. If you get caught there by an Indian, it's watching commission suicide. Hmm. Yeah, I hear stories of what they do to white men caught there. Well, steer clear of that place. Hey, what you climbing that rock for? Uh, I just want to take a last look around. No harm in plain sight. Yeah, I guess you're... Holy mackerel. What you see? It's rather be down the trail, coming up this way. It's not the marshal. It's lightning Jim and his deputy. They're devils, that's what they are, devils. Not men. We can't get away from them. We can't get away. Easy, take it easy, Brenton. Wait till I get down here. Come on, come on, let's get moving. Just a minute. They ain't got us yet. Come on. Let's get through that burial ground. Through the engine burial ground? Sure. But if the engine skipped it, we've got to take a chance. We leave a trail into that burial ground. Then the marshals will follow it. Then we'll hurry over to Big Eagle's camp and tell him we saw white men go in the burial ground. Yeah. Then the angels will come and get the marshals. Right. And then we hurry and send them engines back here just in time to catch Lightning Jim and his deputy. Let's go. Lightning Jim may be one of the best trailers in the West. But here's one time he's going to trail himself right into trouble. Keep 
going, Whitey. Get close me in on them. Oh, I hope so, Bagdadley. You know, like in the end, you saw the talk. <laughs> hey. Look here. Bagdadley, you always seeing things I don't see, like in... What you see now? Well, for one thing, the trail's plain as day now. They ain't trying to hide it no more. Uh, maybe they think they, they gave us the slip, huh? Maybe, but here's another thing. Them tracks head straight to that Indian chief burial ground. Bill, they're gone. Uh, well, see, they, they say that no white man's ever got off in their life. Yeah, from the stories I heard, I guess no white man ever wanted to go in there. Oh, I don't blame them. That's enough. Uh, you mean that you... I mean that them two traitors went in there, and we're following them. Come on. Well, well. It's like the dangerous places in the world. If you're a United States Marshal, sooner or later you get into them all. <laughs> you know why you wouldn't pay the job for any other job in the world? Oh, maybe not. Uh, but sometimes, like, you know, I think I'd be better off punching cars. Hey, know? where is he at mound over there? Yeah. That's an Indian grave. Oh, see, now, look at all them beasts and uh, them trinkets and things on the top. That's where the bears are dead. Put all their belongings and gifts with them. Yeah, Bagan, if you look at this uh, tomahawk uh, here in the grave. You know, I, I think... Charlie, I... come on. Go not trust. You believe me, say, yeah. Hey, They're coming for us, mate. Don't shoot, buddy. We ain't got a chance. They're all around us. <laughs> you, Chief Big Eagle? Uh, yeah. We meant no harm, Chief. He was failing out, Lord. You have come into a place where spirits of all great chiefs live. You shall not leave alive. But listen, Chief, we're trying, we're trying to help you, I tell you. Crass and Brandon are trying to start an Indian war between you and Chief Red Fox. Uh, Crass, Brandon, Chief Big Eagle's friend. Tell them gun. They start in this war so the kin tell you, son. Your braves will be killed. Murder. Uh, it's no use, Lightning. Like you don't believe him. The United States Marshal. Great White Father be angry with Chief Big Eagle. Yeah. Indian law. Any pale face see Indian chief graves make them bad medicine. Must make heliogramas to make good medicine. Will you promise? What's that? It means the death of the blazing... Um, yes. You can't do that, Chief Big Eagle. You can't do it, I tell you. You can't. He just can't watch that lightning. Like what what do you say? Quiet, right, buddy. It's a message to the spirit. They're apologizing because pale faces came here. They're promising the spirits to get revenge. Yo, but they do slow hiding them nice. I got that in for. Therefore, for the death of the blazing sun. The death of the blazing sun. They must get like that. Well, I heard some scouts talk about it, but I didn't think the Indians ever. Well, I guess you're going to find out anyhow, Whitey. They hang you over the edge for that breeze rawhide. Yeah, yeah, but not for the neck. They tie the rawhide around your waist and let you hang there. Get to the waist. Why is that So if you can climb up it, then they put knives in your belt. Knives to cut the rawhide. Yeah, oh, but if you cut the rawhide, you'll fall to the rocks below. Yeah. With the sun beating down on you. And being reflected from the rocks behind, just like being in a furnace. And when you can't stand it no more. You cut the rope and fall to the rocks. Yeah, that's it. That's the death of the blazing sun. Facing death. blazing sun, a lingering, excruciating death, comparable only to being slowly roasted alive, one of the most horrible tortures conceived by the vengeful minds of the savages. Can the marshals escape from it? Listen to part two, which follows immediately.
And now for part two of the adventures of Lightning Jim. The two marshals were hung over the precipice by greased rawhide tied around their waists. Their hands were loosened and knives were placed in their belts so that they might commit suicide by cutting the rawhide when the heat became unbearable. Then the Indians departed, leaving the two marshals hanging half naked in the sun about six feet apart and hundreds of feet above the sharp, ugly rocks below. I can't climb this rawhide, Whitey. The only chance is to holler for help. Oh, this sun, Nathan. It's like why you're... It's like being roasted alive. Yeah, I know. Let's holler, Whitey. Holler together. It's no use, Nathan. Nobody ever comes through here except any Indian. You gotta try it, Whitey. We gotta try every chance. Come on, holler. Hello? 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 Stand there, Easy, Whitey. We gotta hold out as long as we can. Something may happen. I can't stand the heat. I can't stand the light. You stand. I'm going to cut the raw hide. Whitey. No, you can't do that. Whitey, no. Whitey. What's the use, Lightning? She can't stand this no longer. You might as well end it now. Whitey. Whitey, there must be some way out. We want men to die here like this. Out there. We gotta hold out. Hold out. As long as it can. What do you need? I could only reach the wall of the cliff. Maybe I could cut notches in it and... Whitey. Whitey. I got an idea. Whitey. Whitey! You're all right, sir. Hold on, hold on, Whitey. I got me an idea. We may get out of the shed. You're, uh, what are you going to do? I'm going to cut slots in this rawhide. Cut right through the center. A long way. Without parting the rawhide. And then I can maybe get a, a grip in the rawhide and pull myself up. Oh, but if you make him speak, if your knife slips, you Cut the raw head and... I, uh, I'm going to take that chance. It's our only chance. I only need three or four slots and then I can get to the top. There! Yeah. i cut one. Why? i cut one. Careful, I think. Don't forget what it should be. I'll be careful. I'll get this one like that. Let me get drop the knife. Yeah. Ready? You still got your knife? You cut the... Lock your rawhide. Oh, I'll try, Nathan. I'll try. <coughs> I can't do it, Nathan. I can hardly lift my arm. Try again, Whitey. But don't drop that knife. It's our only chance. Try again, Whitey. You, you, you've got to do it. I can't, Nathan. I can't. I tried. Lightning! Lightning, don't look at me, Lady. I just can't do it. That's all right, Whitey. If I could only get your knife. We, Whitey, we ain't like that. Start swinging over this way. Start swinging? Yeah. You swing toward me, and I'll swing toward you. We ought to be able to reach each other, and then you can pass it in the knife. Sure. I try, Lightning. All right. Let's go. That's it! Swing farther! Swing farther! Careful now, Whitey! Don't let go the knife till I get good hold of it! This time, Lightning! Grab it this time! All right! Swing far! There! No! I missed it, Whitey! Don't let go of that knife! Hold it! This time! No! Way out! No! I got it! I got the knife, Whitey! I got it! I got it!
Lightening him with the knife he managed to get from Whitey, carefully cut slots in the rawhide. Putting his hand through each slot, he pulled himself by sheer willpower up onto the top of the precipice. Then, with his last remaining strength, he managed to pull up the now unconscious Whitey. In a short time, they regained their strength. The two marshals hurried to where they had left their horses tied and rode rapidly to the camp of Chief Red Fox, where they found the braves ready to go on the warpath against Chief Big Eagle's men. Lightning Jim tries to convince Chief Red Fox that he's making a mistake. But Chief Big Eagle don't want to fight your Chief Red Fox. He's a traitor. Hey, Chief Big Eagle wants my land, my squaw. Tell face traitors make lies. They tell Chief Big Eagle you want his land and squaws. Chief Red Fox. No one, Chief Big Eagle's land and squad. I know you don't, Chief Red Fox. These traders just want to make battle between Indians so they can sell guns and ammunition. Pale face traders say they no sell Chief Big Eagle guns. Pale face traders make lies. They tell Chief Big Eagle they no sell you guns. Uh, Chief Red Fox, no like pale face traders. They make lies. You make powwow with Chief Big Eagle. Then no fight, no brain kill. A wow with Big Chief Eagle. So, come to his camp with me. We go on the flag of truth. Hurry up! Hurry up! Hurry up! Uh, me go. Good. Chief Red Fox agreed to go with Lightning Jim and Whitey to Chief Big Eagle's camp under a flag of truce. Although Chief Big Eagle showed great amazement at the appearance of the two marshals, Lightning Jim offered no explanation, knowing that his seemingly miraculous escape would make his word carry weight with the chief. The two chiefs meet in a powwow with Lightning Jim acting as arbitrator. Chief Red Fox, do you want Chief Big Eagle's land or squaws? Uh, my land full with game. My squaws plenty. Me no want Chief Big Eagle's land or squaw. Chief Big Eagle, you want Chief Red Fox land or squaws? No. Yeah. Chief Big Eagle happy here. Chief Big Eagle's brave, much happy. No one of Chief Red Fox land or squaw. He'll be traitor life. Chief Big Eagle. Chief Red Fox, smoke them peace pipe. Ah, uh, four. Chief Lightning Jim, smoke them peace pipe with Indian chiefs. Yeah, Lightning Jim, smoke them peace pipe with Indian chiefs. Great White Father punish pale face traitors. Great White Father want Indians be happy, have hunting grounds. Indians not hurt pale faces, not hurt Indians. That is good. Ah. Uh. So tell them, great white father, Chief Big Eagle and Chief Red Fox want to be friends, not hurt tail faces. So Lightning Jim brought peace to the Indian tribe. But there is still work to be done for the marshals. Once again, they take up the relentless pursuit of the traders. Back in Kelseyville, Kraft and Branton, feeling secure because they believe that the marshals have been killed by the Indians, prepare to bring guns and ammunition to the Indians. Late that same afternoon, they ride up to an open front blacksmith shop in Kelseyville. Hello there, Smitty. Yeah. Oh, hello, Grant. Hello, Brent. Hi, Smitty. Say, hey, I need a new bridle. Yeah, all right. I'll keep one for you. Oh, say. Say, there was someone looking for you fellas about an hour ago. Yeah, who? It was uh, Lightning Jim and Whitey. What? Well, they were... Shut up, you fool. Yeah. Yeah, I told them that uh, he could find you over uh, at the place. Brandy. We got to make tracks pronto. Let's go. Hey, 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 you forgot your bridle. Hey, Smitty. Yeah, be right out. 
I was set. Oh, oh, it's you, Lightning. Oh, hello there, Lightning. Hello there, Smith. Hey, Smitty, can you make another knot in this skirt here? Yeah? Uh, sure, Lightning, sure. Hey, see, them fellas you was asking for was here a couple of hours ago. Grass and Branton? Hey, which way did they go? Where they high field it over toward the Indian country. Come on, buddy. Hey, you fellas going to see them? Oh, you bet to your life you're going to see them. Well, tell them they forgot the bridle they ordered. Well, they're going to won't need a bridle. Let's go thunder. Looks like he met up with a whole band of horsemen. Uncharred horses, buddy. That means Indians. Yeah, that's so. Well, uh, these big eagles placed are the only Indians that hunt there. Yeah. Wait. Just take a look at them, Frack. Uh, see, look. Them footprints leading right to the edge of the cliff. Come on. Let's follow them. Right in. Let him look over here to the cliff. Three straw height strips. And the ends have been cut off, sharp, with a knife. Let me be down there on them rocks. Those bodies. In bed. Crash and brand. Yeah. Looks like they met up with two big eagles, braves, all right. Hey, buddy. Yes, we reached the end of the trail, yes? No. We reached the end of that trail, too. The end of the trail. The death of the blazing sun. And so ends another thrilling chapter in the lives of those two famous marshals. Lightning Jim Whipple and Whitey Larson. Mm-hmm.